Okay, so now that we have the unit unboxed, let's go through the setup of the Puritan Bennett 560 ventilator. I'm going to first start in the back of the unit and show you some things on the back here. So on the back of the ventilator, there is the on-off switch right here. There is the battery cover right here. There's the AC power plug-in right here. There is actually a, a, an ability to plug into an external battery. Then there is some connections for a PC. And uh, there's also USB ports for additional information about the patient. There is also a uh, plug-in for a nurse call or an alarm, a remote alarm. And then there is also an O2 connector. So this O2 connector basically is where you'll hook up your low flow oxygen connection. The flow should not exceed 15 liters per minute, and it's written right on the back here. And so to put that in, I'm going to depress this metal button here and then slide it in till it catches. And then your O2 tubing will connect to that. Then you also have basically the uh, filter where the gas is pulled in to deliver to the patient. So that is basically the back of the unit. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. And then we'll turn the unit around and we'll look at the front part of the unit. All right, so now we're in the front of the unit and we're going to attach the components for the front part of the circuit. One of the components is the exhalation block. And so if you look at the bottom of the device, there is a screw right there. And you unscrew that screw and the block will actually slide out. So in between patients, you want to go ahead and replace that block. And once again, this will just slide in and you'll tighten up that screw. So that's the exhalation block right in there. Then you also have a connection to that exhalation block. And this is your pilot for the exhalation valve. So I'm going to plug that into the side. And I'll just pull that around. Kind of see that. And that's basically going to plug right in here. Nice and tight like that. Now the end of that is uh, it's diameter and indexed. And so right in here, I'm going to plug that right into this connection for the exhalation pilot uh, valve. Now you notice that there is another connection right below. That connection below is for the proximal pressure line. So I'm going to bring in my proximal pressure line and I'll connect that one up right there. Okay. Over here, we have the oxygen sensor, the optional oxygen sensor. So I'm going to go ahead and take that, and I'm going to connect that. And it has a little bit of an arrow on the end of it, which should be at the 12 o'clock position. So I'll just kind of push that in. It connects like that. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, my filter on. So I have an inspiratory filter here. And then I also have one on the exhalation side. So now I have a, sil a filter on the inspiratory side. The expiratory side, I can put my O2 sensor on. All right, so now I've got most of my components all hooked up. The last thing I'm going to hook up is my circuit. So I'm just going to grab my circuit, grab the ends of my circuit here. And we'll plug in the exhalation part right over here, and then we'll plug in the inspiratory part. Now, depending on the circuit that you're using, uh, you will determine if you want to put water traps in. Uh, without any heated wires, of course, you'd like to have some uh, water traps in the circuit. So now we have the whole system set up. You can kind of see the water trap here, and we have our inspiratory, exterior lines, and I have a test lung on the circuit as well. So at this point, we have all our circuitry hooked up, so I also want to mention that there are little ports on both sides that you want to make sure that you don't block as well. Okay, so now that we've covered the back of the machine, let's look at the front of the machine. To help aid in that, I'm going to go ahead and turn the unit on. So as it powers up, you can see a couple of things. First off, you can see that we have the AC power light over on the top left-hand side here. 
There is also another light if you were to use an external battery, and then there's also, if you're using an internal battery, another light there. Just to demonstrate that, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the AC power cord in the back, and you can kind of see that light light up. It also initiates an alarm over here. I'm going to plug it back in. And working our way down, you can see that there's a little information icon. That basically just means to make sure you check the manual if you have any further questions. Then on the very bottom, there's a start uh, ventilation button. Right now, we're in what's called the standby mode. And so you can see over here, it says press to start to ventilate. On the screen, you're seeing a number of settings of what was basically left up there last time. So right now, we're in volume-based assist control. And then below, there is a number of parameters that you can set. On the bottom of uh, the unit, you can see four buttons here, and those are to help navigate this screen. So the up and down arrows basically let me move from one parameter to another. And as I want to uh, change a parameter, I use the check mark or enter key here, and then it pops up the present value, and I simply adjust it by the up and down arrows. Once you achieved the uh, setting that you'd like, make sure you always press the enter button here. And that's how I'll navigate through this screen. Once I'm through with this screen, at the very bottom, there is a preference screen. And so there's some additional information, once again, to enter in there. I need to press the check mark button. And then you have a number of parameters that you can adjust here as well. So the backlight, the contrast, the alarm volume, a number of different parameters. To go back to the initial screen we were on, I'll go down and press the enter key. Otherwise, it defaults back after a little period of time. And then on the right-hand side, this is your alarm uh, control. And so you can silence alarms. Uh, you'll see you have visual indicators of alarms. There are medium and high priority alarms only. Um, you cannot pre-silence alarms, but this is where you will control your alarms. So that concludes the control panel and the display of the Puritan Bennett 560 ventilator. Now that we've described the dual limb setup, I want to talk about a single limb setup. There is an option with the Puritan Bennett 560 ventilator to use a single limb. You can see in the image here that you can use just a single a limb circuit. Basically, you will have similar setups for the exhalation valve control. You'll also have a uh, proximal pressure line that will connect into the circuit. You'll have a filter as well, and you can also connect the uh, oxygen analyzer sensor. As for the exhalation side, you're just going to go ahead and cap that. We recommend that you cap the exhalation side. So there are some circuitry pieces in here that are not include, included, as you'll see up in the text up on the uh, top right-hand side here. So you decide if you want to have uh, drainage files, things like that, included in your circuit. But once again, very simple setup in terms of using a single limb. And then once again, you're not coming back to the exhalation side here and using a dual limb. Uh, what you lose is you lose one thing is the ex exhaled volume. And so you have to remember to turn off the exhaled volume alarm because you do not get any exhaled volume back into the machine. So that describes a single limb setup for the Puritan Bennett 560 ventilator.